the kind of news that would keep rocking any former president, especially one trying to mount a comeback campaign. Even if, I'd be the first to admit, it could also feel almost routine, but bad routine, a bad kind of routine, but it feels almost routine to talk about this Mike Pence subpoena given all of Donald Trump's many legal problems. The fact remains that there is this open criminal probe and it is going higher up Trump's circle than ever before. We all remember the Mueller probe, which upended Trump's presidency. It sent his campaign share and top lawyer to prison. But even that probe, with all of its results, never hit Trump's number two. Now, this recently appointed DOJ special counsel, Jack Smith, is the one hauling Mike Pence in. With Team Trump now trying to fight it with that same privilege playbook they've used before, which, by the way, has failed before, the reports are that Smith is now moving aggressively on several fronts and that he's building out his team and intensifying the pace according to new york times reporting and using evidence and mounds of testimony from congress to assess whether to indict donald trump's electors scheme the fake electors that looked like fraud now right there i can tell you that's a relatively small nugget of reporting but it's very interesting because the doj was not initially focused on elector fraud or the so-called paperwork parts of the coup attempt. And you know, I always try to keep it straightforward here. No one's accused Attorney General Garland of a wrongdoing or malpractice. But the fact is, in the last two years show that Attorney General Garland began this probe with a kind of elite double standard. And many experts have called this out. The people who stormed the Capitol they were swiftly indicted and convicted. They were identified, arrested, they got their trials. And that includes people who were somewhat bizarre pawns to the Trump White House. Political randos, certainly not planners. They showed up where they were summoned. And Garland's probe, and we know this because we've been following it, avoided bringing the same kind of heat to the lawyers and elites that are so tied to the DOJ community. John Eastman on your screen right now has far more exposure and culpability than some of those randos I mentioned. I mean, this is the guy who wrote up plans for the January 6th coup, who wrote up plans and admitted he knew what he presented was illegal, who spoke at that Jan 6 rally, as you see him doing right here, but who also clerked in the Supreme Court and knows a lot of the right people. I'll tell it to you like it is. There are people around Attorney General Garland who view Mr. Eastman, even after all this, as a kind of peer, an elite legal fellow traveler. And they haven't gone after him. Now the reporting here that Smith is at least looking at the elector plot means he would assess whether to indict any of those planners. Eastman, Navarro, Bannon, those are the people who worked on the elector fraud. For one reason, it was sophisticated and involved a lot of call it allegedly illegal lawyering, but it certainly wasn't something that the so-called QAnon shaman was involved in planning. It was a written coup plan. And the Times is reporting this is the type of stuff Smith is looking at. The elector fraud is key because as we've reported, and as the January 6th committee meticulously showed, that fraud didn't stand alone over here. That fraud was tied to what Trump wanted. It was a pretext that the coup plotters hoped to use to get pets to delay or completely subvert the certification that day. The electors from these battleground states signed documents falsely asserting that they were the quote, duly elected electors from their state and submitted them to the National Archives and to Vice President Pence. Donald Trump had a direct and personal role in this effort, as did Rudy Giuliani, as did John Eastman. In other words, the same people who were attempting to pressure Vice President Mike Pence to reject electoral votes illegally were also simultaneously working to reverse the outcome of the 2020 election at the state level. That's the hard evidence. And remember, it's completely distinct from the violent insurrection. Had there never been an insurrection, which rightfully generated more legal heat and attention than the elector fraud, the underlying elector fraud would still be, I say this as carefully as possible, allegedly illegal. But it was literally written down. You just saw it on your screen. It was fraud. 
So they have the fraudulent documents, the text, the allegedly illegal memos about it, written by Trump's supposed legal experts. But like other criminal organizations, sometimes the consigliere or the lawyer is not exactly helping you follow the law. It's all linked because that fraud was what the plotters wanted to use to try to make Mike Pence or conscript Mike Pence or with the threat of violence pressure Mike Pence into being their co-conspirator. He famously refused, and he has never had to tell the truth about any of that under oath until likely now. 